Hello there, everyone. Hey, it's another beautiful day. It's a beautiful Monday. So let's mellow out with Psalm 123. You'll do that with me, won't you? Of course you will. It's really a short psalm. It's going to take us like 20 seconds to read it. But it's a group of psalms called the Psalms of Ascent. We've had those before because you're talking about 15 psalms from 120 through 134 that were particularly used during the three great feast celebrations that took place in Jerusalem throughout the year. The first one being the, the first fruits. That would be all the winter wheat that you planted. Now you're finally able to harvest that early in the spring. All right. And then you have the, the next feast, which is Passover, celebrating God's deliverance of the people from slavery in Egypt. Then you had the final one, the Feast of Booths, which is the final gathering in for the fall harvest. So those three particular feasts, you were encouraged to make a pilgrimage to Jerusalem, to the temple, and offer your sacrifices there at least once in your life. Most importantly for the Passover, but for any of those three. Or get there as often as you can if you live close by. But there are those who don't live close by. So they have long journeys to make. And what you would do is as you're making these journeys, especially as you're getting closer and going in, you would sing particularly these Psalms of Ascent. Ascent meaning you're going up. You're moving up, literally uphill into Jerusalem. And then once you're inside the city gates, you're moving up to the temple physically. And once you're in the temple area, you're moving up into the temple proper where the sacrifices are done and all your praying and stuff like that. And you have 15 steps that you go up. And there's 15 Psalms of Ascent. Now, what's interesting is you see that progression going on in the Psalms themselves. Just real quickly, you start there with Psalm 120, and it makes reference to a couple places. Um, Meshach and Kedar. Where are those places? We have no idea. So they must have been way out of the way places. And, you know, maybe someday archaeologists are going to discover exactly where they're at. But right now, we just don't know. And and that's okay because it, this shows that, that people from the, the far reaches and far uh, countryside, the, the little podunk places you just never hear about, they're on their way making their pilgrimage to uh, Jerusalem. So Psalm 120 starts it all out. Then you get to Psalm 121 where it starts out with, I lift up my eyes to the hills and from where is my help to come? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. All right. So I look up to these hills and am I, is my help going to be up there? What hills? Well, now you're getting closer to Jerusalem, getting into some hilly country. And they say Jerusalem, Mount Zion on a hill. Yeah. You're, not, you're getting close. Now you move into Psalm 123, and it starts, I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Our feet are standing within your gates, O Jerusalem. In other words, let's go to church. Let's get up into the temple. So now you're inside. You're actually inside Jerusalem. You've made it. Whew, what, a, what a journey that's been. And all the while, you are now celebrating by reciting these psalms and sometimes it's a, a leader it could be a rabbi from a synagogue or a, 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 it could be almost anybody who's just shouting out the lead and you're repeating back or it's just a back and forth all different ways uh, musical instruments are being used but now you here is psalm 123 that's our reading for this sunday i'm going to read the whole thing like i said it's going to be under 20 seconds long to you I lift up my eyes, O you who are enthroned in the heavens, as the eyes of servants look to the hand of their masters, as the eyes of a maid to the hand of her mistress. So our eyes look to the Lord our God until he has mercy on us. Have mercy on us, O Lord. Have mercy upon us, for we have had more than enough of contempt. Our soul has had more than its fill of the scorn of those who are at ease, of the contempt of the proud. All right, so now you've made that journey to the temple, and you're finally in the city, you're in the temple, and this is the first prayer 
you pray. Dear God, have mercy on us. Put our lives and our minds and our hearts at ease. That's what we need at this point. Dear God, we've been living out there in the boondocks. And, you know, a lot of our neighbors, they don't believe in you. They don't believe in Yahweh. And they laugh at us. Uh, they say we're stupid, we're idiotic, and all kind of stuff. They just throw all kind of stuff right at us. And God, we are so weary and worn down from that. Please, just... Give us a break. Give us your love, your grace, and your mercy. It's a beautiful, beautiful prayer. One that we can still pray today. Because I'm sure as we go out into the world, uh, we're not walking the same in the same footsteps that they're walking. Not always, no. And sometimes we are at odds with our, our neighbors and our fellow human beings around us. And it can be difficult. It can be difficult. And so we need that love and that grace and that Spirit of God to bolster us up uh, and, and make us living examples of His love, His forgiveness, His grace in this world. And uh, all right, so let's pray that prayer, Lord. Have mercy on us. Fill us up with your love. All right. And keep filling us up with these beautiful, beautiful days that you reach out and give to us um, as we enjoy our summer times together. God's blessings be with you, and we'll see you later.